these days are very rich with the life of uh, giant saints. Um, and I'll explain what it means by giant saints. Like today, the, the feast of Saint Maximus and Domadius. And um, of course, we're celebrating John the Baptist and the gospel was just about him and how he was preparing the way for the bridegroom. And, uh, you know, towards the end of this week, also the Feast of St. Anthony, uh, a great pillar also in heaven. So let me today talk about uh, these two saints because they are one of my favorite and I, I ask for their intercession every single day. And I'll tell you why. And I'll tell you how much we need them. And we need the power and the grace they have. We need it greatly. But let me explain first to you that, you know, as you know, St. Maximus and Domadius, they were the children of a Roman emperor. And they left uh, their palace, their father. They became monks. And not just monks, they became very ascetic in the monastic life because there are different degrees even in monastic life. There are some people who you know, have uh, the, the normal monks and some people, as you see uh, or as you heard in the story, that St. Macarius put on them the scheme. Scheme is like a, a higher level of uh, asceticism. And of course, the people who, uh, who are given the vision of heaven or has been to heaven, visited, they said, these are true pillars in heaven. They are very uh, 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 illuminous in heaven, uh, and, and yani, they are of a great honor in heaven more than many others, because their ascetic life is just a, a, a way of martyrdom that's consistent, that's every day, someone who went from one extreme to another, someone who lived uh, uh, the, the life of the palace, having everything, all the luxury of the world, and not just leaving the luxury of the world and living a simple life, but living an ascetic life. Ascetic life meaning eating a, a small loaf of bread once a day in the end of the day and fasting, you know, for days and spending uh, all, all their, their life, their energy, you know, in the life of worship. The question is, why is that and why do we desperately need them? We need them. God made them saints of great honor actually for us. As a matter of fact, these two saints have led so many rich people and so many people who were of great honor to leave things for Christ's sake. And not just to leave things. Again, they're going from one extreme to another. From the, 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 the most rich and luxurious and, and all of this to the most ascetic. Why is that? Let me ask you a question. If they were good Christians, as they were before leaving their palace, they stayed with their father, and they continued to go to church and serve and give to the poor, isn't this good enough? Wouldn't this make them good Christians and have great, you know, place in heaven? Sure, of course it would. But they want it more. They want it more of God. And because they want it more of God, after they tasted Him, they knew that they have to let go of more of themselves. Same way John the Baptist. By the way, John the Baptist lived almost the same life because he was a priestly family. His father is a priest. He must be a priest by the age of 30. You know, good family, good parents, good everything. Couldn't he just continue to live a normal life and be a priest like his father? And that's great. Isn't this a, a big thing and big honor? Not like what he became as a forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. As higher than all the prophets and all the saints of the Old Testament, he went beyond all of them because he left all. And he said he must increase but I must decrease. Someone went to the Lord Jesus and said, I want to follow you. He said, okay. Obey the commandment. 
I, I, I want to be a good person. He said, follow, follow the commandments. He said, I kept all the commandments. So Jesus looked at him and loved him and said, one thing you lack. Go sell all what you have. Give to the poor and come and follow me. But that was too big for him. He might have been one of the four evangelists if he had done that. He might have been St. Paul. Might have been a big pillar, but he couldn't. He thought Jesus is asking him for too much. You increase the dosage, Dr. Jesus. You asked me for something beyond my ability. God forbid that the, the God of heaven and earth who manages the whole universe would give me more than I can endure. But everyone has a call. Some people have great calls, but these great calls, they come with an expense, sometimes a high expense. But one of the things that stop us from following what the Lord wants us to follow and from achieving what God has for me is my love for earthly things. Whether materials, family, positions, comfort. And these two saints left all of the above. Of course, not by their own power, but the power that comes from above. And they became who they are. They became the, the very own disciples and children of St. Macarius. If you read the, the, the story, that's the one he's actually in their icon. St. Macarius is one of the pillars of monastic life right after St. Anthony. He's the, he's the father who organized monastic life after St. Anthony. Great pillar also in heaven. They became his very own children. He almost adopted them. They were full of the spirit. They made so many miracles. The things that they might have in the world became like ashes. All the things that they might have owned doesn't exist now. But they live. And they live very strongly. And they live and their legacy and their, their, their power, the grace that they have received has helped many people to let go of things in this world and to follow the Lord Jesus Christ with all their hearts. And maybe the grace that comes with them and their feast can help us also to let go of the convenience of this world that is really stopping us from achieving our call from God. You think leaving money is very hard. Let's not talk about money now, because that's one of the hard things. Do you know that it's very, very, very hard for us to leave an opinion, to let go of a convinc conviction, something that I'm convinced with? And these convictions are 100% the world's convictions and the, the world's logic. So they are inviting us through the grace they have received. Let go that you might keep what you can never lose in this life. Let go that you can embrace more and more of the grace of God. Let go of that relationships, these friendships. Let go of this job, of this money. Let go of this thing, whatever that is that is stopping me. What is that one thing? Forget about letting go of all of this. These are for the, you know, the masters and PhDs. Okay, fine. Can you at least keep the minimum ascetic life that the church is giving us fasts when they come and not complain about fast and how early Lent is coming and how much you're planning you know, to skip if you're planning to, it's too much? Can you at least let go of that 
and keep the minimum thing that the layman people can keep. There's nothing wrong with money. There's nothing wrong with food. There is nothing wrong with acquisition and, and, and property and stuff like this. But there is, it's, it's, it's a sin when it's stopping me from what God wants me to achieve and how God wants me to grow. Constantly, God is asking His people to let go. Small things first. God, I, I know that this, when I say let go, a lot of you think of big things and God wants me to leave all my money. No. God is never going to ask you for this right away. But God will always ask you for small steps with big commitments. Small things with great commitments. Great commitments to you, your prayer, your fasts, the little things. You know what's our biggest problem with fasting? It's not obviously the food because we're, we're in, a, in, a, in a country where the, the food is the cheapest in the entire world. Did you know that? That food here in America is the cheapest in the whole world. So obviously it's not a food thing. And there's a lot of convenience. There's all kinds of food coming from all the world. We are spoiled. Sometimes we're aware of that. We're not aware of that. But why do we not fast, for example? Because it's inconvenient. It's inconvenient. I like to focus at work. I need the caffeine so I can perform better. Really? You can't let go of that. That's essential. Oh my goodness. Look at this. This is hard. This is tough. Talking about letting go of everything. We're not talking about that. But little steps here and there to acquire more of Him. He must increase, but I must decrease. In every occasion, in every season, God is asking to let go of something. And God in His goodness, not that He wants to prevent us or make us deprived of anything, but He wants us to be free of anything. Free. I wake up in the morning and I'm free to do what God wants me to do. Not attach it to things. You know, the job is not num my number one priority. Food is not my number one of priority. And the family is not my number one of priority. Nothing. He is my number one of priority. And He does not change. And He is stable. And He is good. That's why my life is good and stable and in His hands. Let go of the things that are worrying me day after day. They may acquire more of His grace. And not just acquire more of grace for myself, but for others. They never receive this grace for themselves. But they passed on this grace to everyone, to all generations. Let go. Not only you'll be free, you'll be very rich. Very rich of everything. You let go of one thing, but you'll be rich of everything. Because the fruit of the Spirit, as the Bible said, is, is a spirit of many, many tastes. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, kindness, self-control. All of these is just for that letting go. These saints are given to us as a gift from God. They are a gift from God. They are our helpers. Not only they intercede for us, but they give us from what they have. They give us from their spirit. That's why we celebrate their feast. So, why don't we ask, as people living in the most luxurious place in the world, the richest country, having everything in abundance, can I have everything, but I let go of everything? Give you one last story, because uh, that, that it gives you just an example of people who let go. This story 
of um, one of the great ascetic, actually hermits. You know the hermits or the anchorites? The people who reach a level where they can, the flesh does not exist. They can move from one place to another in no time. His name is San Silwan or Silvanus. San Silvanus. He reached a level and then he was asking God, who is at my level spiritually so I can learn from him? Like, give me someone. And God told him uh, about a king in one of the areas, you know, in, in, you know, near Lebanon. It was like a king over like a, a city. And the, and the ascetic father said, a king? A king is it at my, li like, how is that? He said, go and visit him. So he went to the city, of course, his own way. And he uh, stood at the door of the city asking, where is the king? How do I see him? He said, don't worry. The king is actually coming out now. Perfect time. Stay where you are. You're going to see him. And then the king came in a big, you know, procession. And he's wearing all gold. And, and, and San Silvanus said that, that even the reflection of his diamonds came in his eyes. Like that's how much like diamonds and, and luxury the king had. And San Silvanus said, I must be a lost person then if I am in that level of that king. The king passed by procession, passed by San Silvanus, and then the king from upward he is, he looked back and he said, Silvanus, meet me at the palace this afternoon. And the saint was, oh my goodness. No, he's a saint. If he knew me and he knew my name and all of this, he must be a saint. So he went in the afternoon for, uh, to, to, to the palace. And the king sat and he had like something interesting at a long table. And he had all the servants who work in the palace eat on the same table. Everybody. So the king received him and he said, you know, let's first eat lunch. And San Silvanus sat with him and the king and the queen, all the servants. And they all ate except the king and the queen. They did not eat. And San Silvanus did not eat. Of course, he's an ascetic person. He ate a, a loaf of bread in the whole day. So he didn't eat anything. After they finished, the king said, come to my room. Went inside the king's chamber. And the king took off his royal clothes. And underneath, he had like a sackcloth. You know, sackcloth is like very rough. Uh, 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 material, and it's for the even the poor people do not wear this because it's a, it's, it's a, it's not for humans. And he was wearing that, and he he said to San Silvanus, and the queen joined him. She also had the same thing, and he said to San Silvanus, "Come, let's pray." He had actually a monk inside his own uh, room, and they all prayed for about three four hours. After that. He said, time to eat. It was about the evening. And then the servant brought four lo loaves of bread. King took one, queen one, monk one, San Silvanus one. He said, don't worry about the, what you see outside. I live as an ascetic person here in this palace. And God brought you here because God wanted you to know this story and go tell the monks in the, in the wilderness so they are not uh, proud, number one. And number two, that people in the world, they know that there is an opportunity for them to live a life beyond the culture and what the culture says and what the culture gives. His people lived in the spirit and acquired the spirit of God more and more. They loved him more than anything else. Nothing can separate them from the love of Christ. Nothing can face them in this world. They went beyond uh, all the, the, the barriers and the obstacles of this world. So this feast today is an invitation for all of us to use them because we desperately need them in our culture. We desperately 
need them to give us more of their grace, to give us from the abundance that they have, then we can easily, through their prayers and, and through their help, we can let go of the, our addiction to the convenience and to the, the, the culture and to what's out there that's seeking our attention and our focus and really follow God with all our hearts, to know Him and to know that in knowing Him, there is a cost, but it's a sweet cost. In the end, it will take us beyond all these silly things. When I let go of these things, I know that these were silly things. So may uh, God give us from their, their prayers, their lives, their intercession. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are they.